Hello, and welcome to Christ Church Bells Corners. I am the Reverend Deacon Tamara Connors. This is our online liturgy of the word for the Sundays in ordinary time. We begin by remembering that we worship on the traditional land of the Algonquin people. May we do so with gratitude and respect. Please join with us for our opening hymn. Thank you, O oh God, that you have brought us together in whatever way possible on this the Lord's day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. 
Please join with us for the hymn of praise. Planting, fish netting, bread baking, and pearl hiding God, you shape us into living parables. We pray that your Spirit working within us help us understand our life experiences as healing metaphors, that we may become creative and abundant stewards of the world you entrust to our love. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any chain charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or per persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, will be able, um, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree 
so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid and then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that is thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. And when it was full, they drew it ashore, they sat down, they put the good in baskets and threw out the bad. Then Jesus asked the disciples, have you understood all this? And they answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In a few weeks, we in the Diocese of Ottawa will move from the red phase, which prohibits service in the church, to the amber phase, opening up our spaces. This means that September 6th, the first Sunday in September, we will be able to hold church services once again in our building. As our team preparing to return to worship, prepares the church for a safe return to gathering again together, we will be contacting each of you by phone to review our plans and discover your plans. This is a time of great anxiety. The Apostle Paul, when he wrote in the letter to the Romans, as he prepared to go to Rome for his first trip, was also writing in the context of deep anxiety, fear, and danger. So the words that he writes in chapter 8 of his letter are a poignant reminder all those thousands of years ago, Christian and Jewish people of faith struggled with events and circumstances that threatened them and seemed as though they would overwhelm them. So Paul writes to encourage, to support, and to strengthen these new Christians, these fledgling believers. And this is what he writes. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, in our frailty. We do not know how to pray so the Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for believers. If God is for us, writes Paul, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own Son, but gave him up for us all. And this is where I see a connection between two of the parables that we heard in the Gospel and this reading from Romans and the context that we find ourselves in today. The parable of the treasure in the field and the parable of the pearl of great price. In both parables, once the treasure is discovered, the one who searches holds back nothing to gain and to gather that treasure. So it is that God, who continually invites, searches for us, seeks us out, wherever we are, wherever we've wandered, wherever we stray, and God gives all. God emptied his very self to become flesh incarnate, so that we might understand the love that God has for us, that we may know beyond doubt or any fear that God is love and that God will never abandon us, will never leave us alone. Paul asks, 
Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or the sword? And of course, today we could add a pandemic, COVID-19, masks, social, social isolation. The response to all these and more is the same. Will anything overwhelm us? No, writes Paul. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. And from the Gospel of John, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that everyone who believes will not perish, but have life everlasting. At the close of this morning's gospel, Jesus says, everyone who's been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of the house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. And so using these old, old stories, these parables, we find new meaning for us today. For every parable has a multiplicity of possible meanings and interpretations. Who is the merchant? Who is the one tilling the field? What is the treasure? Today, after prayer and reflection, and holding the words of Paul's letter in one hand and the words of the gospel in another, and reading Robert Capon's book on the parables of the kingdom, new meaning emerges out of an old story, meaning that gives hope at this time when our outlook can be very bleak, because the truth is that many will not be able to return in September, will not either feel it is safe enough or it will not be safe enough for them to return until there is a vaccine. And that fact, that very thought that we won't be able to all gather together at once, that we will not be able to sing or embrace each other, frightens us, depresses us, saddens us, and perhaps even makes us angry. So we need to hold both the words of Paul and the words of Jesus to our hearts. And when we feel isolated, overwhelmed, lonely, sad, angry, or hopeless, when we have those sighs, when we heave those sighs that are too deep for words, we need to know that God who is love searches our hearts, knows our mind, and reassures us that in all circumstances God is with us and will work with and through whatever circumstances we are in, whatever choices we make, for we are the treasure that God seeks, each of us, beloved children of God. God gives everything to secure this treasure, us, each of us. Just as those Christians in Rome drew strength and encouragement from Paul's letter, so too we need to immerse ourselves in the word, to know that God, who is love, did not withhold his own son, will give all, and so neither death nor life, not angels or rulers, not things we are presently undergoing, or things that are still to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life, for those returning to work, and for those who cannot return to work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for all those who are isolated and alone. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For this community, our country, and the world, for all who strive for justice, freedom, equality, and peace, for our leaders at all levels of government. Lord, hear our prayer. For the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, racism, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, sickness, or any kind of trouble. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and those in need, for our first responders, frontline workers, and all service providers. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Shane, our bishop, and for all other clergy, for all who serve God in the church and in the community. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own needs and those of others. Lord, hear our prayer. Together in prayer, we remember those who have journeyed with us and now move on to be with your eternal presence, where their eyes are fully opened to your love and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We thank you, Lord, for your promise to be with us always, for your presence with us in so many ways every day. We pray these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In gratitude, in deep gratitude for this moment, for this time, for the call to be your people, we give ourselves to you. Be with, be with us, us, Lord, to live as changed people because, because we have been touched by the living God and, and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect much from us, enable much by us, encourage many through us. So, so Holy, Holy God, God, may we, we live to your glory both as inhabitants of the earth and citizens of the commonwealth of heaven. Amen. Amen. The weaving of peace be thine, peace around thy soul and twine, peace of the creator flowing free, peace of the sun watching over thee, peace of the spirit abide in thee, peace of the one, peace of the three a weaving of peace be upon thee. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the God of peace enable us to do every kind of goodness, working in us what is pleasing through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join with us for our closing hymn. 